time. I could have made it. <laughs> What's the name of the channel? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do this. Hi, welcome to Embrace the Trek, our <laughs> YouTube channel. We we thought we would um, do a, a, a video of all our gear, since some of you at least aren't going to be familiar with uh, backpacking gear that's used on through hikes. So Kieran's going to start with the heavy stuff, and I'll pick up with some of the lighter stuff. And we're going to show you how we get all of this into a pack and on our backs and have everything that we need. First thing we've got is is bulky stuff that has to do with um, sheltering and sleeping. So let's start with the tent. This is our tent. It weighs um, total with the stakes weighs about two pounds. Yeah. And it is a Z Pax uh, three person tent called a triplex. It gives us plenty of room. Two people, three person tent, and it's a one wall tent that. Um, is spectacular in rain and wind and everyday weather. We totally loved this tent. Um, I put that in at the bottom of my pack. And we'll show a video of putting it up uh, a little bit later and, uh, and how we use it. Inside the tent, um, I start out with, and so does Robert, we start out with a sleeping pad. This is an inflatable sleeping pad not real expensive, um, not real fancy. Uh, might not be comfortable enough for some people, but for us, it's perfectly fine. Requires no pump or anything to blow it up. And um, it's pretty self-explanatory. And um, why are you taking it apart? I'm gonna blow it up while you're talking about okay. the quilt. Okay. So, next thing is what we sleep in. As opposed to a sleeping bag, we sleep in quilts. Quilts don't um, actually have anything beneath you. They just come up around you. Um, the theory is that you you really diminish the loft underneath you if you're, if you're in a sleeping bag and it's not necessary. Reduces the weight just to have a quilt. A quilt weighs one and a half. Mm -hmm. One and a half pounds. I'm gonna pass out here and just. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the pad, we've got the uh, quilt. We're in the tent. So now that, just another thing about the pad, you can notice it's not a full 72 inches or whatever length. Uh, so we sleep with it down to maybe thigh, thigh to top of the head, and we don't sleep in winter temperatures. So this just keeps us if the ground is bumpy. Uh, super bumpy or rocky it makes it much more comfortable to have this but we've not real puncture proof however so don't be putting it on the ground. you have to be really careful because if you get <laughs> a puncture in it you aren't going to fix it by checking out uh, for the bubbles in the motel uh, at your next rest it's not going to happen it's going to leak from now on so then we also use not these because we sit on these and we use these you know on the trail during the day but pads like these we don't have our big ones or another option i'm seriously considering taking that instead of the blow up pad because you can't puncture it you can use it outside anywhere you don't have to worry about a ground cloth or anything and uh, it has its pluses so we're thinking about uh, which one to take speaking of ground cloths we just have a, a length of tyvek um, insulation material here that we can use for a ground cloth or just to lay out when we stop for lunch or whatever. The tent floor is so tough though you don't need a, a ground cloth but if we're cowboy camping which is we don't put up the tent and just sleep out under the stars we use what you use to insulate windows in the winter uh, the kind you tape to the window frame and then use a, a uh, blow dryer to tighten it. These are ultra light and um, much really better than Tyvek, which seems light, but it weighs quite a bit if you've got a big piece. We don't like to carry much gear outside of our pack, but the few things we do carry besides water uh, includes uh, an umbrella, uh, a very light umbrella. This was made by a company that's now out of business called GoPro, or Go Light, sorry. 
and um, it's a really nice umbrella. I wish they still made it, but they make similar ones. This weighs eight ounces, and it's really good to keep the sun off. Obviously good for rain as well. And it's nice if the rain's not coming sideways at you. You don't have to put on rain gear to use an umbrella. You just put it up and walk along, and uh, you don't get as wet as you might if you had rain gear on from the sweat in the rain gear and then for the rain itself. The other thing we always use, we used to never use these, but now we use trekking poles. These are folded up, but trekking poles are indispensable when you're coming to water crossings or when you're in water crossings. Uh, we could not have done some of the water crossings we did on the Continental Divide Trail last year without poles. And, uh, we hardly did it with them. We kind of went in the water with them too. They start to vibrate like a guitar string when they get it to a certain depth in a certain uh, cascade of water. So um, the only other thing is I mentioned we carry outside the pack is just water bottles. Here's one here. It's just a simple Gatorade bottle. These plastic bottles you get in the grocery store are lightweight. Um, this is maybe two ounces compared to if you get an Nalgene bottle at REI, it's eight ounces for the bottle alone, and they're indestructible. Um, so that's pretty much everything we carry outside the pack. If you get greedy about carrying stuff on the outside of the pack, it raises your probability of losing something. I had a friend who lost his tent poles in the middle of a long stretch in the Arizona Trail and was not happy as a result. So. I carry a couple of things on the outside of my pack that you probably don't. That uh, I would carry my my pack cover, my rain cover for my pack, uh, just so it's uh, it's very handy. I'll show you when we put things away that um, it it's nice to have it right at you know right where I can get to it. The other thing is I have um, rain gear in case it were in really bad. Uh, rain and I need to put something on quickly. I carry those. My two rain gear. I, I have <laughs> a very cheap set of. Yeah, uh, so do I. They both have very cheap set of, of uh, frog tog rain gear. It costs twenty dollars and lasts about one trip. I've shredded pairs of them, but they're pretty good and they actually uh, are pretty good at shedding uh, or letting or breathing. So uh, Gore-Tex costs three hundred dollars. For a jacket, this is twenty dollars for a full suit. Good for really one through hike. I'll talk briefly about a water system. We both carry filters. I carry a Sawyer squeeze filter, which simply attaches to a bag that's filled with water you've gathered, wild water in a tank or a stream or a lake, and this attaches to the bag. You turn it upside down and just squeeze filtered water into the bag, and it's very effective filtered at removing water from the bag. From the bag into, into a, clean, a bag. clean bag. Yeah, sorry. Um, so we carry quite a bit of um, uh, storage space for water. We've got uh, a gallon, or well, let's see, almost two gallons for just storing raw water if we needed to. That would be extreme circumstances. This is three liters for clean water. And of course we'll have uh, each have a liter bottle and a half liter bottle. Where's the um, one that goes to these? I carry um, a bee free catadine um, that it, I love because it you the filter on it just <laughs> attaches directly to what you've scooped out of the stream or the water source and then once you've got that in place you can just drink directly from from this there's no squeezing into another container so this or is, if you want to squeeze one. into another container we've got a three liter bag that fits this filter and we can just scoop out of a, a stream or a lake or whatever if we're lucky a stream uh, or a windmill tank or what have you and uh, and and have good water storage that way. So uh, next I'll talk about how we cook. Um, we use propane canisters uh, for, for cooking and basically cooking for us is just heating water. Um, we have a propane container here and I've got a 
a little stove that screws onto the propane container. This is really one of the more efficient ways and safe ways to cook while you're on the trail. Very, I've never heard of anybody, I think it's happened, but very few times do these catch on fire and you don't cook in your tent, of course. Alternatives include wood, which is really not any good, blackens your, um, your cookware and really makes a mess. <clears throat> and alcohol stoves are, may not be legal in a place where there's uh, fire restrictions, so canister stoves are, are a pretty good alternative, I think. Um, so basically you just, it's real easy to start, you just start it and light it. And we use titanium mugs like this, uh, what is it, I don't remember, 110 milliliter two cup, two cups will fit in this. Titanium, and I've got a titanium spoon. Terrence, Karen's is Lexan. So, um, but I always know where mine is. We both, <laughs> true, I can't say that. Um, we also b both use uh, cups like this that you can make, um, Meals in it. You can put a meal in this and, and uh, close it up and let it rehydrate in here and so on. So uh, that, that's pretty, we just carry a, one spoon each and um, if you lose your spoon you're in dire straits and that's happened. We're often asked about what protection we carry. We don't carry a gun um, because in the event of an attack from an animal, mostly bears, but possibly mountain lions. The odds of getting a weapon out in time to deflect a, an angry animal, or, or that's not a good good odds there. But even if you had time to draw a weapon, uh, I don't think it's very likely you could bring a bear down unless you're a real expert. We just carry bear spray. It's a 12 ounce container, which is a big weight. What a small one too. Uh, giveaway, but Karen carries a small one. We carry these. A big one and a small one. So we've got mm -hmm. a, a big and a small, me and Karen. But, um, so we'll, we carry this. Both of us will carry it if we're in grizzly country, but otherwise I just carry it. Let me talk about electronics for a second. Um, just very simply, we carry an anchor 20,000 milliamp hour battery and two other brand 10,000 milliamp batteries because we may go as long as 10 days and everything we use, is, uh, we use can be charged off of, of these batteries. We can keep two cell phones going and um, our cameras going and uh, that's very helpful. Uh, <clears throat> of course, there's always a bunch of cords I carry a, uh, a pair of wireless over-the-shoulder headphones, earbuds uh, that are actually pretty good for $30. Found that uh, it's easy to lose Apple earbuds. That were a birthday present. Yeah. I uh, just carry a, an actually real old headlamp, but I actually don't use headlamps that often. Sometimes cell phones work for headlamps too, but I'd rather not use that power. And for reading, but... For cameras, I'm filming this with an iPhone 12 Pro, and we've got a Nikon point-and-shoot W300 waterproof camera, and that's all we're gonna carry. Uh, also, I'm carrying a Benro tripod that weighs two pounds, 12 ounces, which is a huge weight sacrifice, but um, it's necessary for, uh, for shooting decent video. Food. Each of us carries uh, whatever, like say we go for five days uh, before the next resupply. We each carry our food in a, in a, a type, a uh, Dyneema bag. Um, and inside the food, the big food bag, we can put everything in Ziplocs. So there can be a whole meal in Ziplocs as for instance this is this is moroccan chicken and so we put all the ingredients that we need for that meal into a ziploc and at night we just have to put a freezer a ziploc so you can pour in boiling water and just cook the meal in the bag so all 
uh, breakfasts, lunches, dinners, and snacks would go into the food bag and um, sometimes we take things out and, and repack them for the day so they're easier to get to. But otherwise we sit and we rummage through the bag and you know, get what we need. So um, I would say, I don't know, what is that one? Well, I'm not about... sure what that one weighs, but uh, our food in general, per person, per day, uh, we need about a pound and a quarter food per person per day. We find that we don't eat as much on the trail as obviously we I've been eating uh, on the on the winter break um, uh, and exercise uh, suppresses our appetite so we just don't eat as much so I lose tons of weight uh, last summer over a four month period I lost 40 pounds so um, Karen doesn't lose as much but she loses weight um, but we're just not as hungry so we're, we're gonna end this video here okay. and we'll talk about clothing. Okay. Surprise. We'll Looks like I'm not through, I'm not through. <laughs> we'll talk about clothing in the next video and some personal gear and a few other items, but a, a lot of our major gear was included in this video. So thanks for watching. If, uh, if you enjoyed this, hit the like uh, up, uh, thumbs up and, um, and be one of the, our first subscribers.